votes to the 2018 Library Chess Productions Movie Awards. We took a quick break to get some supper into us, and now it's time to come back and talk about some real, real dumpster fires. These are the top five worst movies of 2018. So they couldn't all make the cut, so we both have a few dishonorable mentions. Uh, mine are The Week of, Killing Joan, The House of Jack Built, and A Wrinkle in Time. Oh, wow, wow. You disliked A Wrinkle in Time enough that it made the honorables for this yeah, list. Wow. All right, cool. I was kind of, I was, I was, that's the only one of those movies that I've actually seen. It certainly wasn't on that level for me for, like, Wrinkle in Time, but uh, it, it certainly was less than what I had hoped that that movie would potentially be, and judging by response, that seems to be pretty uh, pretty universal across the board. Um, I only have three honorable mentions. Uh, I have The Nun, uh, Golden Exits, which is a cheater from last year that is just like somebody's desire to make a Woody Allen movie, but not having any of the talent or foresight of Woody Allen. And The Strangers Pray at Night, which I thought was crappy outside of the basically the pool scene. I liked it. And a it. couple of other things. I liked it, but not like a lot. Mm. But I actually liked it, I think, pretty much on par with the first. Which yeah. I didn't love. Like, I really right. li I really liked the first one up to a certain point, and then it shit the bed. Mm. I think I liked this one a similar amount. A similar amount. But I didn't yeah. love it, by any means. Mm. I like, at the, at the very least, I thought this this the pray like pray at night was memorable not necessarily memorable for great reasons but like i don't rec i don't remember a ton about the first one and this one's like i'll at least remember the stuff about this that i didn't like so maybe that's enough i don't know but yeah it was uh, unfortunately wasn't wasn't good enough to stay off of this list okay my number 5 is 50 shades freed hmm. which Almost did make the cut, but I gotta show it some hate. Right. And like weirdly though, I'm kind of going against um, what a lot of other people think because I actually think this was the best one. It's it's the same. It's the same as the other ones. Uh, there's no chemistry between the two. Johnson's trying her best. The sex scenes aren't sexy, except this one. It's kind of like off the rails story wise. Okay. Which was like. Almost a little better because at least it was a little silly. And that's saying something because the last one had a helicopter crash. I mean, no, but this one is like they really kind of went off the rails, I think. Okay. And it was a little silly, but like I, I, I kind of needed that a little bit. I still don't like the movie. Right. It's it's the best one, and it's still in my top five worst movies. Uh, what a legacy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True enough. What a yeah. What a legacy. Um. I, di I didn't see it, and as much of a staunch defender of the first two, well, the first one especially, I didn't, I, I didn't, I just, I couldn't, I don't know, uh, every time I'd go to watch it, I'd be like, I don't want to watch this. I watched it for you! I only watched this trilogy for you. And that's part, maybe that's part of why I didn't watch it. <laughs> I got him to watch that movie. I mean, now I've, I've completed the trilogy. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, it's so good. My number five worst movie of 2018 is the internet meme lord itself, Slender Man. So I actually did sit through Slender Man. And, like, I'm a big baby. And you know yes, this. Yes, you are. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the world's biggest infant it, and with movies, like, I get scared at anything that is remotely scary, and even some stuff that's not. Like, I, I, it's real easy to get me. So I've stopped giving horror movies credit for scaring me, unless it's done in a unique way. Because it's like, I don't give someone credit for breathing, why should I give this movie credit for scaring me? And that's basically the level that it's on. Uh, this movie does not do anything uniquely to scare me anyways it was just it was exactly what you would expect from a slender man movie it was it was it was it was slender man there is a couple of interesting visual effects and there is a couple of interesting like plot points where like the first girl goes missing and her drunken father shows up at like the other, one of the other girls house and like breaks into her house and he's like i thought he was going to beat the shit out of her I really did. Like, I thought he was going to literally beat her up. And I was like, okay, this is at least an interesting plot contrivance. Like, you've, you've, you've actually done something where I'm like, huh, what's, what's going to happen? Like, like, at the very least, you've done that. But, I mean, a couple of interesting visual points and plot points obviously aren't going to carry 
like, um, again, the an absolute meme lord of a premise that is crazily underperformed. It's not like they have good actors in this, but actors that don't have names can still put in decent performances, and that was very much not the case in this movie. This movie is obviously, at the very least, trying to be the Blair Witch Project, and uh, at the very least, that is better than no effort at all. But then you get to the ending, and the ending is just goofy stupidity nothingness, and it just drags the whole thing down even further. So Slenderman's my number five to the surprise of exactly no one. I didn't say it, but I actually think Slenderman deserves like a better movie. Yeah, I mean, th I think there's Slender a Man's better a cool, like a cool idea. Yeah, and I think there's a better movie to be made. The, like there have been a couple of Slenderman movies, but yeah. this is like the first like quote unquote bigger budget Hollywood style horror movie around that mythos. And I think there's a better movie to be made there, and that was made in the '90s, and it was called The Blair Witch Project. <laughs> but I, I do think there is a good Slenderman movie to be made. It just sure wasn't this one. My number four is Abiza. Um, I'm going to be honest, the only reason I watch this is because I find Jillian Jacobs charming. Mm. Like, even if she's in bad movies or whatever, I just generally enjoy watching her. Okay. Um, and then the uh, rest of the movie, it's supposed to be a drama and a comedy. Um, I forgot during it that it was either of those. I'm really still not convinced <laughs> that it's either of those. It's just such, like, a try-hard, boring flop. Like, it tries it tries to hit this romantic number, it doesn't do it, the comedy doesn't work. Like, Jillian Jacobs, while not, like, obviously not a top-tier actress, she can do good work, and mm. I think she deserves, deserves deserves a lot better than this. That's really all I have to say about mm. Ibiza. And a lot better than what she had to work with? Yeah. So is Ibiza, like, the place Ibiza? Yeah. Are we going there? Yeah. Are we going to Ibiza? Oh my gosh, shut up. My number four worst movie of 2018 is all the proof anyone needs of just how much you can get away with with inspired by true events. And it's The Child Remains. Now, the Child Remains remains, in fact, one of the only movies that I have ever A, submitted to Kritiker, and B, remain the only person that has reviewed. <laughs> no one else has reviewed this movie on that website. Apparently nobody saw it. So basically The Child Remains is a horror movie it's, it's inspired by the events of the Butterbox Babies. I did a review of this movie on this channel, in fact. That's why it's familiar. Yeah. I couldn't remember why that was familiar to me. Yeah, and so it's, so it's based around like the ideal maternity home, which was a, uh, a World War II and post-World War II maternity home in Chester, Nova Scotia, that basically took in like unwed mothers and the kids and adopted them out and if the kids had any kind of mental deformity or physical deformity or anything they basically buried them alive or threw them in the ocean and uh, they took this premise and turned it into a Chucky style horror movie basically if you take what is a truly dark page in a place's history and turn it into a mundane non-horrific horror movie and it, you just render it, I mean, basically unremarkable even within its own genre. That is good enough for me to land you on this list, especially when that place happens to be Nova Scotia. So Child Remains is my number four, and if you watched my review on the channel, that probably won't surprise you. I was very forgiving to it when I reviewed it. I was like, eh, I gave it an eh, when really it was like, it was. this is basically just Shudder. Okay, my number three is Best Friends Volume 1. I think it's called Volume 1. Okay. Anyway, we need to have a, like a serious talk right now. Okay. You know Tommy Wiseau? I do. Well, him and his, him and his best buddy, what's his face? Oh, Greg Sestero. He, I don't care. <laughs> he, uh, they made another movie together. Yes, they did. And I watched it. Um, and they even put the, the R in friends in parentheses, so it's like best friends. Fiends? Mm -hmm. But that's Fred. It's, it's so clever. We gotta have a talk. The Tommy Wiseau renaissance that came with the disaster artist was cute and all, but it's time for it to end. <laughs> it, it's done, all right? right? He's had his, like, s a second moment in the sun, I guess. <clears throat> Maybe he never really left, because the room is still popular. The room was really good. I mean, bad, but really good. Right. I love the room. This is just like, they know, and it's like, hey, remember The Room? Now we're making another movie together. In fact, we're making another part. It might already be out. I don't know. I haven't looked for it. 
Um, Cause why would you? Yeah, I'm not gonna bother. I don't. I, I watched this one just to see, but mm. like, why is that one? What's his face? I just don't care about what they do. Why is that? <laughs> it should have been titled Why is that? What's his face? <laughs> Better title. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I'm so. I'm so over Tommy Wiseau. Like, I will rewatch to the room, you know, and that'll be funny, and I'm okay with that, and that's where it needs to end because Wiseau is not talented, and and watching him act in a movie knowing that he he's kind of aware of his situation in life and it's like ha 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 I'm funny right right like the the room was misguided passion he was trying to make a great movie and just couldn't that's why the room is great this movie is actually like fairly competent in a few ways you know like the way it's shot is like not the worst thing I've ever seen like it flows right. you know but it's just they, they know it's too aware I was right. like, no, look, it's Tommy. It's like, I don't care anymore. So basically, it's like, like I can't stand Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, neither can I. Because it's just too... Yeah. Yeah. I'm Jimmy Fallon. It's like, I, I can't I can't take it. I just, I just can't put up with it. So that sounds, anyway, like that's very much what this is. It's like, hey, I'm Tommy Wiseau, and my accent, I don't know why it's Italian. But it's like, it's like he doesn't even know what his accent yeah. is, so why should I? Um, yeah, yeah, fair enough. That's that's unfortunate, because I, I had totally forgotten about that until you mentioned it, and it's like, oh, maybe that would be something worth checking out, and clearly, no. Clearly no it's, it's, time, it's time to end. I'm very glad that James Franco prevented him from saying anything in the Golden Gloves, <laughs> which was a funny moment. But it's like, okay, it's, I think, I, I, Tommy, I think, I, I think we're done. I yeah, think we're done here. We should be done. We're breaking up. My number three worst movie of 2018, and you'll notice I got my paperwork back because I have to read a direct quote. It's a movie that I talked about earlier in these awards, and that's the 1517 to Paris. It was bad enough that it winds up on this list. And again, what I had said before, bad performances, time-hopping narrative that it works way too much against the movie rather than working in the movie's favor. Big, huge, lengthy periods of this movie where absolutely nothing interesting happens. Nothing interesting is said, nothing interesting happens, and then they get back to the train, and I'm like, finally, at least we're back to the place where the thing happens. <laughs> Something interesting might happen on the screen. All of those things, obviously, still true. But I wanted to read you a direct quote from the review that I did on Critiker for this movie, because I think it pretty accurately, in one sentence, a run-on sentence, because I like to hear myself talk, uh, really sums up the way that the movie ultimately came across for me. I can, in the same instance, both appreciate this film's creative aim and criticize its execution. The payoff didn't justify what you have to go through to get there. And that's why the 1517 to Paris winds up on this list at number three. What a stinker, even though I've never seen it. Yeah, and, and again, it's like Clint Eastwood, I think he's a better director than this, or can be a better director than this, and it just, I don't know, there's just... I'm just this... wondering if maybe he's losing it. Mentally? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, The Mule's not getting amazing reviews. It's not getting, like, terrible. It's, no. like, okay received. And didn't he do American Sniper? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I think, I think it was American Sniper I don't think that Sniper was that as did. well received as... <clears throat> not as they I hoped. certainly didn't think it was amazing. But it was all right. <clears throat> I don't know, maybe he's just having a rough skit. I don't know. But he, is, he is old, so it would make sense if he was maybe losing it. Right. Okay, my number two is Proud Mary. Um, there's a guy in particular that also rates stuff. I don't remember his name, <clears throat> but he said this, and I'm not, I'm not able to say it any better. We get standard direct-to-video stuff. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's like the perfect quote. We get standard direct-to-video stuff. That's, and that's all this feels. All like you, the movie is. Yeah, it's just boring. I, I had that movie downloaded for like months and deleted it without watching it. <laughs> it's not good. I was actually like, mm. kind of looking forward to it. Right. It looked all right, I guess, but it just didn't pan out. Is it is it potentially a premise that deserved a better movie? Well, I mean, it's just basically a revenge flick. It's not oh. like a... I mean, I love revenge setups and stuff. So maybe, right. But I wouldn't say the premise was anything that <clears throat> substantial that I'm like, it really deserved better. It's like, you know, right. I see lots of movies like this. 
My number two worst movie of 2018 is another movie I talked about earlier in these videos. That is The Darkest Minds. And when I said earlier that The Darkest Minds is derivative of other YA that's already been released and specifically mentioned like Hunger Games and Maze Runner, I just want to take an extra second to really hammer home just how derivative of those things this movie was. So these are all elements that you'll find within the movie The Darkest Minds. Let me know if any of them ring a bell in other YA movies that you've, you've watched. Um, special Child. Special Child gets sent to a camp. Special Child escapes camp. Special Child joins rebellious faction. Special Child and group fractures. Ham-fisted negative chemistry romance between special child and generic male is forced apart for someone's own good. Like, just same shit, different channel. Like, it's how many dozens of times have we seen that exact same thing yeah. happen in YA? And it's not that there aren't really good YA properties that don't do these things. It's just these are the ones that get made into crummy movies. And once again, in the interest of stroking my own ego, I am going to quote myself. It's a paraphrase quote, but it's still a quote. It does nothing different, existing as a horribly derivative, formulaic nothing of a movie with a screenplay, once again, that sounds like it was written on a cereal box. And The Darkest Minds, only the second worst thing that crossed my eyes cinematically in 2018. If you got something so derivative... And like a story that's been told a million times, because so many stories have been told a million times. You need right. to you need to bring something to the table, like good performances, like some interesting scenes, something know, good, different, good cinematography or whatever. Right. You need to you need to bring something. And like, this movie doesn't look terrible, like like cinema, cinem, like from a cinematography perspective, it doesn't look. Yeah, but terrible. competent isn't enough. But when no, when everything right. else is is not good. Exactly. Like, people can hate on The Hunger Games, but those are actually good movies. I mean, I know that that was early in the YA craze. So, right. You know, maybe more forgiving of the series as a whole. But those are actually good mo movies that had interesting ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my number one is Krampus Origins. Ooh. Um, I, don't, I don't love picking on really small, like, almost non-existent budget movies. I don't like doing it. Because... Most of the time it's just passion, they don't have the budget to really realize their vision, and they try, and like generally I can kind of uh, adapt to that, like okay, the special effects aren't any good, but they got no money, so that's, that's fine, right? Remember, remember Krampus from a few years ago? Mm -hmm. That's surprisingly good. Like horror yeah. comedy where Krampus was, and I'm gonna swear here, Krampus was a bad motherfucker. Yeah. Like had legitimately cool scenes where like Krampus is on a house with the snow and Krampus is running around. I'm like, yeah. dude, that was that movie. Like I actually every time I think about that movie, I think I like it more. Like when I saw it, I originally I think it was like a oh it's a six point five, but I think it might be at least an eight. Like mm. that movie was so good, so good in fact that now that I see, when I see Krampus in a movie title, I'm like, yeah, Krampus, let's do this. But there's like no good Krampus movies besides the right. one from a few years ago because there was actually like a budget and some talent mm. put into that, right? This is just completely low budget and I can't damn this movie any more than just saying, okay, so you're watching it, not really a whole lot's happening, it sucks for an hour. And then Krampus shows up. An hour into the movie, Krampus shows up. And, but then once, I was like, okay, let's do this. Let's get it. Krampus is here, right? The first scene he's in, he's, like, standing in a room. He doesn't even look cool. Like, a low budget, I know. I know. Low budget, they can't do a lot. But, like, the, the, the design sucked. He's standing there, and he's basically just talking to them. Like, he's threatening them, mind you, because he's evil. But at the same time, it's just, like, a conversation. It's like, so this is how Krampus appears? He just... Yeah. Stands there, awkward, like the camera's just on him, and he's just talking. And then eventually he might kill some people, but like by that point it's like, nah, you, you ruined, you ruined Krampus. Wow. It's such a terrible movie. And again, I hate picking on these like indie, indie, indie flicks. But at the same time, it's like if you can't make the movie that's in your head at least a little bit with like a low, 
budget, then right. you should really not be making that movie. Like, if, if you have no budget and you know you can't pull something decent off with the budget that you have, then don't make that movie. Right. Like, I, I, so, that sucks. Like, I'm glad, I'm, I'm sure they're happy that they made it, and that's great, and I don't want to piss on their happiness for that. You can, though, if, but it's, if it's bad. But it's a bad movie. <laughs> Maybe that should have been my premise that deserves better, because Krampus deserves a <sighs> sequel to that good, that good one from a few years ago. Can I ask a question? What the fuck happened in the first hour of the movie before Krampus showed up? I don't know. I can't movie. remember. I, honestly, I can't even remember. I, I only remember that it was like an it was roughly an hour okay. before Krampus showed up. Like, wow. It was like they might have mentioned something about Krampus. But I don't even know. Like I don't remember the exact details. I just remember thinking, "Oh, Krampus is here!" <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I'm watching a Krampus movie. I forgot. Wow. My number one worst movie of 2018 was Samson. And I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you remember when The Rock? Played Hercules a few years Hercules. ago. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Yeah, that was too good. And you imagine how bad that movie, remember how bad that movie well, was? Well, I didn't see it, but I remember you hating on it. Okay. So imagine that movie with 4% of the budget. <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically... And not, not The Rock. And not The Rock. That's basically what this movie is. So in Samson, you have uh, Taylor James, who I like to call low-rent Jason Momoa. Uh... <laughs> Basically playing a Jewish hero who has constant troll face. <laughs> like, anytime anyone talks to him, he looks almost right at the camera and he's like... <laughs> With everything that's said, everything that he says or everything that's said to him is like... And I was just like, why is your face like that? <laughs> why? If I was a director, I would have cut the first shot and said, why is your face like that? This? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why is this a thing that you're doing? So it's it's low rent Jason Momoa with constant troll face, um, trying to play Samson, spewing off lines like "You're only a slave because you allow yourself to be one." That's not how slavery works. Oh uh, yeah, I see. I'm sorry. That's not how slavery I works. I mean, it's a good thought. It, I mean, it's, I it, it's a nice thought when you're Samson and you have biblical strength. <laughs> That's a great thought. But these regular Jewish people are just like, no, we're slaves because they made us slaves. Yeah, and we we're slaves can't do because they got weapons. With some of the most tedious action, if you can even call it action. It's action through inaction. <laughs> That's... Some of the most tedious action and fight scenes, it was like every fight scene was underwater, right? Like, every fight scene is like, it's like, it's like Adam West, like Batman 66, like it's terrible, it's like, But that was, bah. like, charming. Yeah, exactly, but that was, wow. exactly, like, that was charming and, and, and kitschy, and this was just not, it was, it was that, but without any of the charm attached to it, and lower end Jason Momoa, and <laughs> keep going back to it, it's like, Maybe low rent Jason Momoa and what's his face should make a movie. They should. That would be great. Low rent and what's his face. <laughs> <laughs> the movie. Low rent and what's his face. All right, Hollywood, call us. Yeah, fuck that movie. That's the end. That's all I got. This is so fuck bad. It. Movies, papers everywhere. <laughs> Why yeah. do they keep hitting me? All the papers just keep hitting me. Thank you. Get away from there. There you have it, folks. Those are the top five worst movies that we saw in 2018. Now that all of that unpleasantness is out of the way, now that all of the other awards have been given away, it's time for the big one. Top 30 best movies of 2018. Oh, that's right. We said it. Top 30. 3 0 for each of us. 60 potentially different movies, although there will be overlap. I'm sure there will be crossover at some point. But that's the main event. That's what begins with the next video. So join us on the other side. Papers can exit the premises. We're done for the day. Get the fuck out of my house. <laughs>